All right, so how smart is Strawberry or O1 Preview? I have been kind of taking it all in like drinking from a fire hose the last couple of days. And there's been a, a kind of a constellation of, of facts or drip feeds or opinions that I've been taking in that has really kind of made me sit up and take note. So for instance, here's one tweet. The most gifted mathematician has rendered his verdict. GPT-01 is like a mediocre, but not completely incompetent grad student. Um, so that's, you know, okay, so think of it this way. Top, top mathematician in the world, according to someone's opinion, um, says that this new tool, which is just the preview version, just the first version of this new paradigm, is like a mediocre grad student. Now, a mediocre grad student is probably going to be a little bit more intelligent and a little bit more useful, at least on uh, some fields, than your average human, your median human, um, you know, without an education. Because I think it's like, what, about 11% of the U.S. has a graduate degree, something like that, or maybe that's a bachelor's. Anyways, so you're already pre-selecting. That's one clue. Now, I wrote about how a postdoc uh, friend of mine uh, texted me after he started testing O1 Preview. And this is um, a friend of mine who is a PhD researcher um, in the field of oceanography and CFD, computational fluid dynamics. And he said, oh yeah, like it almost got it right the first time. And he, he showed me the prompt. I did not understand most of what it said <laughs> because it was so jargon heavy. And with just a little bit of encouragement, it, it, it got it right. And then I had someone reply, um, I just had O1 write a major cancer treatment project based on a very specific Im immunological approach. It created the full framework of the project in under a minute with highly creative aims, approaches, and even considerations for potential pitfalls and alternative strategies. And he said, this is truly missing in 4.0. Uh, this would have taken me days, if not longer, to prepare, and I still would have missed several of O1's points. In fact, there were at least there was at least one unique idea that I might not have thought of um, even if it, even with 30 years of deep expertise in this field, um, people have no idea what's happening. And again, this is all just preview. So I ultimately wrote multiple postdoc researchers have now said that uh, O1, or sorry, uh, yeah, O1 preview or strawberry is about as useful as a good grad student. Now that's that opinion is not universally shared, but you know people are now comparing it to grad students which is actually what Leopold Aschenbrenner uh, predicted with his situational awareness paper. So it seems like maybe there was more substance to what he was talking about. So we're, we're going to revisit that idea. Now, uh, before we proceed, because basically the whole point of this is just like, wh how, how smart is this thing? And so um, I've been gathering evidence on my Raspberry repository, which, by the way, if this is as smart as it seems to be, then as a service to humanity, we need to open source it with or without OpenAI's permission. Um, so we're and and it's not just me. A bunch of a bunch of people have come out of the woodwork saying that they're trying to duplicate this work. So it's going to happen. Um, so first thing is uh, I've been collecting people's uh, data, basically, uh, you know, kind of crowdsourced data on in terms of how smart is this thing, and so on this test we see that it is now in a completely new league. Um, so we went from you know median 25-ish to 30% performance um, to looks like 85-ish percent performance. Whenever you see a leap like this, that means that you've had a breakthrough paradigm shift in how machine learning is approaching a, a problem. Um, and so once you get into like 95%, um, it's basically a solved problem. The last 5% usually takes many years to close the gap. But at that point, people are not interested in, I, I don't want to say pe not all people, many people are still going to be interested in getting that last, you know, two, three, four, five percent 5% performance. But where, but where you get rewards for your papers is when you go from 25%, when you have a 40% uh, uh, performance jump. That usually is a signal that you're moving in the right direction. I remember back in the day when I first got into machine learning, when uh, uh, XG Boost came out and it crushed a whole bunch of benchmarks at the time. It said, you know, a bunch of ML co competitions went from 30% to 60 to 80%. And they're like, whoa, okay, cool. This is clearly the right direction. And then the next year, everyone has uh, incremental improvements. So whatever OpenAI has done with Strawberry, this is clearly the correct approach because of how broadly it generalizes. Because first, okay, a, math, a, a world-class mathematician stress tests it, and he's not super impressed, but he's also a world-class mathematician. 
um, other people in other domains. So remember, computational fluid dynamics, mathematics, and medical research. Three very different domains. Then compare it to this New York Times te- uh, uh, puzzle and then compare it to this other uh, kind of third-party open-source IQ test. O1 is kind of right in the middle of the pack in terms of general human reasoning. So if it's as useful as a grad student and has basically achieved median uh, intelligence in terms of general purpose intelligence, guys, this like you could make an argument, and, and I, I'm not going to say this is definitely AGI, but I think there's a good case that this is pretty close to AGI. And then if you watch Philip's channel over on AI Explained, it looks like he hasn't updated Simple Bench yet, but it is also in a new category where it's around 50% accurate. I think he's still grading it to get the, the final number, but first bluff is that it's about twice as good as Claude 3.5 Sonnet in terms of uh, S- Philip's Simple Bench reasoning. So it looks like across the board, Simple Bench, or uh, uh, sorry, O1 Preview uh, or Strawberry is across the board more intelligent than every other product out there today, which means great. Okay, cool. Like we we now know the, the next process. And so what I want to do is say is point out um, this is the data from OpenAI, which okay, their own internal benchmarks, like that's one thing, but give but getting pragmatic, like practical feedback from real people solving real problems. Cause like, okay, yes. People's opinions and benchmarks, that's that's one thing. Benchmarks are certainly better than just someone saying, it's the best model out there. I don't really trust the value from LMSYS anymore at all. Um, so you've got benchmarks, then you've got, or in terms of in terms of value, it's like um, LMSYS, pretty low value in terms of figuring out which models are actually smartest. Benchmarks are definitely better. But then ultimately, it's the practical impact. What impact does it have on science? What impact does it have on the economy? And so what what I'm pointing out here is that all of these opinions that I'm showing you, this is all O1 preview. And it looks like O1, which comes out in October, I think, is another full uh, standard deviation more intelligent. So let's just say, let's just imagine that the IQ is, t- is exactly 100. That means that the IQ of O1 is going to be 115 because that's about one standard deviation more. And I think it's like 113.4 or something like that is technically one standard deviation of IQ. So we're going to get almost as big of a jump. So we went from 13 to 56 and then going from 56 to 83. So we're getting almost as big of a jump from GPT-40 to O1 preview to O1. Um, now that's not going to be across the board. You see, it's about half a big as, as jump on coding, but it was already really good at coding. Um, and then here on um, on PhD level science questions, O1 preview, or sorry, 40. <clears throat> good grief! Sorry, I'm I'm still so hoarse. I don't know why. 40 was down here, lower than a human expert, but both O1 preview and O1 are both superior on GPQA uh, diamond. So that's all very interesting. And where I wanted to close was I wanted to revisit this graph that Leopold Aschenbrenner uh, put out. So here it's like, you know, GPT-2 was a preschooler. GPT-3 was an elementary schooler. Um, I would say that it was probably a little bit smarter than that with fine tuning. Um, GPT-4, uh, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe baseline GPT-4 was about that, was about that, uh, or maybe chat GPT, yeah. Uh, a well a well trained chat gpt was was as good as a smart high schooler um and so here we are we're halfway between 2024 and 2026 so we're about right here and so we're now at the point where people are no longer comparing the gpt technology to high schoolers we're comparing it to grad students um which means one more step and we'll be cons- we'll be comparing it to um postdoc researchers uh, and then one more step after that, and we're going to be comparing it to world-class researchers. Now, there's a couple of assumptions that that makes. That's making the assumption that this paradigm does continue to scale. But as as people have pointed out, like, Dave, you were kind of wrong when you said that it's slowing down. And I'll clarify that point in just a second. But the, the thing that really made me sit up and take note is that where GPT-4 started was as a smart high schooler. But o- O1... Preview, as far as we know, Strawberry is still trained on GPT-4. It's just a new training paradigm. 
So if a new training paradigm can can bring it up several standard deviations of intelligence, that is something that I didn't really fully anticipate in terms of uh, functional pragmatic intelligence. Um, and I still have people in the audience somewhere writing comments like, well, it's not actually intelligent. It's not actually thinking. That's a no true Scotsman fallacy, which basically says, you know, you can argue about what's going on internally, like, you know, the, the cog work upstairs, but ultimately it's the output that matters. It is, is the output, uh, economically viable, scientifically valuable, um, or otherwise meaningful to humans. And if the answer is yes, it doesn't matter whether or not it's truly thinking or truly intelligent. Um, that's just cope. Like that's just, that's just a denialist cope. So anyways, so if within one generation, GPT-4, now granted this is over the last two years that it's been out. And I think, what was it? GPT-4 was trained, uh, about six months before it was launched. So OpenAI have had GPT-4 for about two and a half years, but between RLHF, RLA, RLAIF, and all the other, you know, constitutional AI, all of those other techniques, and then whatever this new technique is, which they've all but confirmed it's a combination of chain of thought plus reflection, maybe a couple other things baked in. Uh, a lot of people suspe suspect uh, Monte Carlo tree search. So basically, they tuned a reward, uh, a, a, a reward predictor that instead of RLHF and RLAIF, or maybe this is just another form of RLAIF, um, but then you bake in chain of thought, you bake in uh, reflection, and then you bake in Monte Carlo, um, and that gets you another order of magnitude more intelligent on the same generation. And with all that being said, they're about to release GPT-5. So that's going to be another model, another paradigm shift in terms of model capability, because I've been there since GPT-2. I trained GPT-2 and quickly found limitations. GPT-3 took a much longer time to find limitations, and it looks like we still haven't found the upper bounds of what GPT-4 is capable of, even after two years. So the latent space, in terms, and I don't mean latent space activation, but I mean the latent abilities that we're still unlocking with GPT-4, if we're still unlocking abilities after two and a half years, how much longer are we going to be able to unlock those, those latent abilities of GPT-5? If that gives us a much longer runway, then that means those diminishing returns that I've been afraid of um, with respect to AI slowing down might not matter as much because if if this new training approach results in people saying, wow, O1 preview could have saved me days and days worth of cancer research. How much, when you combine that with AlphaFold from DeepMind and Alpha Proteo with DeepMind, when you go to, when you get that up to O1, and then O2, you know, whatever comes out in December or whatever that Sam Altman has hinted at, I think there's a very strong case to say that that AI has really actually surpassed most human intelligence right now in terms of economic or academic or scientific uh, utility. And so this is why for many years now, um, I, I wrote it in my first AI book, um, arguing over the semantics of what is true intelligence or the philo philosophy of what makes humans better, that is a complete red herring. And I think what this proves is it's even more of a red herring than it was before. I'm not saying that those debates shouldn't happen, but what I'm saying is that those, those conversations should not happen as a way of stymieing discussions of what is the actual scientific and economic impact of these, of this technology from here on out. Um, because again, if we just saw something that that blasted through the barrier of, hey, there's, you know, like, yes, it might cost $1,000 a month or $2,000 a month right now, um, but if it's as smart as a, a good grad student and it's about to be much smarter, that's worth, that's probably worth, the juice might actually be worth the squeeze. And I very well could have been wrong when I said the juice, juice wasn't worth the squeeze. So anyways, I just wanted to share my thoughts that have been ferment, fermenting and percolating since, uh, since getting all this and collecting, collecting what is, what is the group consensus? Um, I, th I do think that, um, well, actually, no, I'll, I'm going to bite my tongue because I don't want to ramble too much. So anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you got a lot, a lot out of this. Uh, cheers. Have a good one. This is man. I, uh, what was, was I right? Was I right that we did achieve AGI in September, 2024? I wish I had stuck by my, my argument now. Um, but it, it, it ain't over yet. We're only halfway through September. So I've got 15 days to make a judgment and say whether or not we got AGI. All right, I'm done. Bye.